there it is. The standard golden number two pencil. Something that you've probably seen every day, at least during school time. And if you're like me, your teacher probably taught you how to hold it the correct way. It probably looks something like this, between your first finger and your thumb, so that you can write nice and elegantly. Or, for most of you, it probably looks something like this, because most people are right-handed. I, on the other hand, did not listen to my teacher, and I drew like this. And I wrote like this. But it was for a good reason. So instead of holding my pencil between my thumb and my first finger, I hold my pencil starting between my first and my second finger. Then I took all of my other fingers and guided the lead with them. I thought I could get more control this way. So I found that my little kid rebellious self actually held my pencil this way for a pretty good reason. Um, other than the normal way. You know what, we won't call it the normal way, we'll just call it to the way that everybody's kind of used to, but that doesn't mean that it's correct or the right way. It's just the way that we were always told, but do you really know why? I think it's just because it looks fancier. Anyway, the way that I hold it, um, I get control with all of my fingers. So I hold it this way, and I can get very, very detailed by using the slight movement of my pinky, um, guided by my ring finger there. My thumb is moving a little bit, um, but not too much. Anyway, with the other way, you only really get control with the first um, three fingers here. But I challenge you to find a different way to hold your pencil where it's more comfortable and you get more control for you. But you know what? I don't always hold my pencil this way. Sometimes I hold it this way. Um, when I'm very detailed, I hold it towards the end of the pencil, and when I want to sketch, I hold it towards the very end where this number is. So mostly so far, I've talked about the number two pencil, and it's the pencil that everybody's used to. It's also the pencil that I used when I drew all through elementary school, all through middle school, and all through high school. It's because it's the standard pencil, and I thought I was super cool and showing off if I could create a masterpiece using the basics, printer paper, and the yellow number two pencil but I was really limiting myself. I knew that there were other kind of pencils, but I just thought that I had extra swag if I used um, the standard number two pencil because it wasn't anything fancy, but I could still create something that was great. So these are number two. This one's a 6H. The higher the number, the more drastic the change is going to be. So this is another graphite pencil. And the H um, stands for the hardness of the lead. So since the lead is hard, it's very, very difficult to make a mark that shows up. This is great for sketching. See, I'm holding my pencil. I don't know. <laughs> so you always want to start, start very, very lightly in case you need to erase. That's what the six H is for. And that's really what all of the H's are for, but the six it's a pretty high number on the scale, so it's going to be close to the lightest pencil. Now, this number six pencil on the other end of the spectrum, a B pencil, um, is going to be drastically different. Now, what do you notice about this uh, B pencil versus the H pencil versus even the number two? Um, you might have noticed that it's a lot shorter, and this is because the lead is a lot softer, so I have to sharpen it more. Now the B, um, I remember it as bold. You can remember it as black, but it draws a lot darker. And it will break because the lead is so soft. I guess I'll keep that in the video just as a good reminder. <laughs> anyway, the B usually stands for bold, black, and then the H you can think of is the hardness of the graphite, or you could hardly see it. So hardly see it. Standard number two, it's somewhere in the middle, it's probably like an HB, and B for bold, and broken. So a good sketching pencil is the 6H pencil, so it's a pretty high number um, in relative terms to number two, and it's an H, so it has very, very light, you can hardly see it. When most people begin to draw, 
they maybe start with one continuous line. So if they're trying to make a circle, maybe they start somewhere in that circle and they just use one line to go all the way around. Might be a little bit wobbly. Okay, I did that a little bit bad on purpose, I'm not gonna lie. Again, you're using pencil, not pen. I'm going to draw lines with the intention of erasing them later. So the way I normally draw circles is pretty quickly and I just go around and around and around until it starts to look uh, the right way to me. And then I kind of pick out the line that I like best and make that a little bit darker. Now most of these are guidelines, so I know I'm gonna erase them later. Um, you can go a little bit differently. Instead of going around and around and around, you could just make short sure little strokes. And then if you can't make a perfect circle, that's totally okay. You can use tools. It's not really cheating. I promise. Use all the resources you can. There we go. The hairy circle. <laughs> okay, now that we have all these circles, we have the basic techniques of sketching, because sketching is a lot of just lines, angles, and shapes. So remembering that you're going to sketch with a light pencil. You could use a number two pencil if you'd like to. This one is even better. Um, and I'm going to show you what a gesture sketch is. So a gesture is kind of like a pose, and you're going to sketch in simple shapes almost as fast as you can. So I'm just going to use pencil C. a gesture sketch and it's basically the skeleton of your actual drawing. So now that you have all the basic shapes, and it does look a little bit scribbly. You noticed I was going back and forth like this a lot and going and correcting things that I already drew. Like I can change this face to look a little bit more symmetrical. Um, I can go back and kind of outline and make things darker that I, I already like and everything that I don't go over is going to be erased later. Go ahead and start to do that, add and build up. So you're working from generic, very little detail, and you're building that up to be extra detailed towards the end. So let's see here. 